Ocasio-Cortez derangement syndrome. It's real. It really is. And there is also something called the Ocasio-Cortez bump. That's why I always call her, or I have repeatedly called her, left-wing Donald Trump. We have this story from the Washington Post. The ravenous hysteria over Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez just reached a new level of crazy. And I saw this from the Washington Post, and I, I thought, oh, are you, are you going to try and pull a kind of narrative where the people on the right criticize the media for being obsessed with Trump, and the people on the left criticize the right for being obsessed with Cortez, like... Both sides are pointing the finger at each other for different reasons. Now, I think it's fair to point, court, point out Cortez, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought she's not the president. She doesn't have that much power. She's just a representative from one district. But she is being propped up by CNN and all these other outlets as the face of the Democratic Party and the, the future of Democrats. And she's not that smart. She, she's not. And now she's embroiled in some FEC scandal. But here's the thing. What's really interesting um, we'll, we'll read, we'll start reading through this because there, there is some really good stuff to be pointed out about the absurdity of how the news is covering her. Uh, but I, I wanted to do a story about following up on the FEC complaints filed against her. Unfortunately, couldn't find any. Why? Only conservative outlets are writing about the fact that there have been two FEC complaints filed against Cortez. You'd think with Ocasio-Cortez derangement syndrome and the Ocasio-Cortez bump, the media would be all over it, but they're not. Now, I can understand why conservatives write about Trump. He is the president. So the news, you know, conservatives and liberals do, to an extent, have to cover his stories pertaining to what he's doing. But it is a fact. We, we, we've seen this time and time again. It's been reported, the Trump bump. And we know about the obsession the media has with reporting it nonstop. But let's take, let's take a look, a deep dive from the Washington Post into Ocasio-Cortez derangement syndrome. Margaret Sullivan writes, Sometime over the past few days, the overreaction to Ocasio-Cortez moved from somewhat strange to downright bizarre, and at times more than a little scary. Now, I want to say this. When I started reading this, I said, oh God, they're going to criticize conservatives for pointing out legitimate issues with Cortez. I, I, I can expect it. It's the Washington Post. But then they said this. On Greg Gutfield's show on Fox News, commentator Catherine Timpf lit into the 29-year-old congresswoman from New York over her championing of the Green New Deal quipping that the climate change initiative might lead to cannibalism. I don't want to eat people, Greg, and I don't want people to eat me, Tim said. AOC, do you want people to eat you? I, I think it's fair to point out that there is a bit of a jest in what is being said. At the same time, why are we even getting to the point where we're making these absurd jokes? Now, look, I understand her plan for the Green New Deal is, in, is absurd, and even Democrats and Republicans are like are calling it absurd, but we're reaching a new level of ragging on Cortez to the point where we're even making jokes about the possibility of cannibalism. And look, my interpretation is that they're obviously being a bit facetious, but I really do think when you follow this narrative, people are, are you know, they're oversimplifying and it's like an exaggeration to an extent, right? I understand the potential for what her plan would do. But come on, come on, come on. Let's, let's, let's lay off the cannibalism stuff and criticize it for what it is. But, but I want to point out, I'm, I'm, I don't believe this is only criticizing right-wing personalities, which is why I thought it'd be interesting to talk about. But they do go on to criticize some conservatives. They say, at last week's CPAC conference, Sebastian Gorka took his shot, inspired by Ocasio-Cortez's recent suggestions that the environment would benefit from restrictions on factory farming and suggestions that Americans consider eating less red meat. They want to rebuild your home, they want to take away your hamburgers, said Gorka, the former Breitbart editor and former Trump administration official known for his Islamophobic ideas. This is what Stalin dreamed about but never achieved. Okay, let's, let's break this one down. First of all, yes, they do want to rebuild your home. She wanted to retrofit, update all buildings in the country, period. Now, taking away your hamburgers is a bit of a stretch, but not too off base. I think to, to criticize this as being false is, would be an exaggeration as well. What she criticized in the Green New Deal, or at least in the facts, was that they couldn't get rid of farting cows because not only does, is methane contributing to greenhouse, uh, uh, the greenhouse effect, but that also the eating meat in general consumes a ton of water and, and, and land and resources and results in farting cows and things like that. So meat, it has been pretty bad for the environment. So he's obviously exaggerating here. You're allowed to exaggerate. Am I going to be upset about that? No, the cannibalism thing makes me kind of like, oh, come on. Let's not go there. It's ridiculous. But the, the hamburgers thing is still in the realm of reality, right? I get it. I get it. They're jokes. But let's move on. At the heightened interest in AOC is not limited to right-wing tirades. 
CNN found it newsworthy that she will be the subject of a new comic book coming out this spring. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the Freshman Force, New Party, Who Dis? Oh, it's so cringy. Admittedly, I made a video about that too. I'm making a video about her again. I think it's I think it's important to break down some of these issues and to also talk about why the media is so obsessed with Donald Trump. And it's actually really simple. For one, he's the president. He needs to have coverage. But Trump bump is real, as I said, and these organizations make money from it. The reason why CNN is now jumping on the, the reporting on a comic book is because the Ocasio-Cortez bump is real. I, I Look, I got to be honest. I can make the assumption this video will do really well for simply, you know, talking about her and what she's doing. She's powerful. You, 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 look, she's not the president. She doesn't have the same authority as, as the executive branch, but she has three point, what, 3.4 million followers now. She is going to be a prominent force in the Democratic Party. And for me, it's alarming because this leaves me politically homeless. I, on, on, on core fundamental issues, I would align mostly with like a moderate Democrat, not a Republican, and definitely at the far left. So even though I'm center left, that's the center of the American politics in this country. That's alarming to me. Trump isn't. Trump is not alarming. The reason for it is he's actually better than the past Republicans. So I'm looking at Republicans like Mitt Romney, McCain, and Bush, and I'm going like, wow, Trump's doing a way better job than they did rel relative to like cultural issues that I can relate to. I still don't agree with a lot of what he's doing. And I think that you, there's a lot of points to criticize him on in terms of American culture. But wow, like I'm, I'm 33. I grew up I've seen the other Republicans and I'm like, yeah, okay, Republicans aren't as bad as they used to be, but I still don't, I'm still not a big fan of, of a lot of their policy positions. The Democrats have gone off the rails. So now here I am in the middle, actually in a left-wing position supporting social policies, but have no one to vote for. But let's, let's read about more criticism. New York Magazine's new cover story explores what the Democratic Socialist has wrought in its cover story headlined, Pinkos Have More Fun. The word socialism has, be, has become a kind of blank canvas on which young leftists project their political desires. Simon Van Zillian Wood wrote, and Saturday, Saturday Night Live in its stand-up of Michael Cohen's congressional testimony featured Kenan Thompson as House Oversight Committee Chairman Elijah E. Cummings. Let's take a break, and then Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez will probably do a dance. Is that right? No, I was going to ask, like, carefully researched questions, replies Melissa Villasenor, playing a winking and waving Cortez. Given that she's been in office, le office less than three months, and that the obsession sh shows no sign of slowing, quite the contrary— an observer has to wonder where we'll be by the time 2020 draws. Will an image of AOC in a white pantsuit be cast in neoclassical copper and moved to New York Harbor to replace the Statue of Liberty? Now you're getting crazy, Sullivan and Washington Post. Will there be a full primetime segment on Fox News devoted fully to vilifying her? The AOC hate hour with Ann Coulter. Oh, you, you mean like how CNN did that with Trump? So much so that Babylon B wrote a satirical piece called CNN Change Its Slogan from the most trusted name in news to Orange Man Bad, which was hilarious, by the way. Could the Salem witch trials possibly be revived and moved to Queens? Ocasio-Cortez herself gets the problem. It feels like an extra job, she told New Yorker editor David Remnick in an interview. I've got a full-time job in Congress, and then I moonlight as America's greatest villain or as the new hope. Very polarizing, by the way. And this ravenous hysteria, she said, is really getting to a level that is kind of out of control. It's dangerous and even scary. I have days when it seems some people want to stoke just enough of it or have just enough plausible deniability if something happens to me. Listen, look, look, look at this. They say that, uh, she said this, the greatest villain or it's new hope. Donald Trump, same perspective. Listen, people on the left don't want to recognize this. I am literally a, 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 in the center quadrant of the political compass. The far left has gone off the rails the moderate liberals aren't engaging anymore. The, the, they call it the exhausted majority. Conservatives outnumber progressives. But the moderates and the liberal factions, the majority of this country, a majority of this country, they are not engaging. So I, as someone who would line up with like a moderate Democrat, I'm looking to the left and saying, y'all are nuts. But I understand the perspective. I look to my left. I see what they're saying. I look to my right. I see what they're saying. And I said, wow, there's a lot of very similar emotional sentiment between Cortez and Trump. The left views her as their new hope the right view, views her as a villain. Now, admittedly, I don't think the right views her as a competent villain. The left thinks Donald Trump is a mischievous Machiavellian Hitler who's twirling his mustache all day and night. And the people on the right, mostly who support Trump, view him as a populist leader who is doing right by his country and improving the country. I think it's fair to point out Trump has done uh, good things and bad things. It's, it's, it's so crazy to me that there's no nuance in the conversation. It, admittedly, though, I will say this. There are a lot of moderate conservatives I actually know that have no trouble criticizing Trump. And these are typically the people that I'm more likely to interview or talk with 
because I, I want to make sure that when I have discussions about these issues, they're rational and reasonable. There are a lot of Trump supporters who are straight up gung ho Trump, you know, riding around on little ATVs with a big old Trump flag, woo, hooting and hollering like Trump is God Emperor and all that stuff. And there are some moderate Republicans who are like he mo- they believe he mostly does good and. And, and that's their stance. They still criticize him when he does. Will Chamberlain is a really good example of this. He's very pro-Trump, but he, he, he does drag Trump on certain issues. And that's respectable, and that's the way it should be. Then you have the far left that just, under no circumstances, will they criticize Cortez. And then you have the moderate Democrats who are just... Well, not, the moderate Democrats in office are definitely going after Cortez, and they're trying to remove her. And, you know, I don't, I don't know where I stand on removing Cortez, because ultimately, like... I don't care if she wins. It's, 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 it's the way the world is and society evolves. I'll have my opinions. I will do what I have to do to express my, my, um, my, the issues important to me. Ultimately, when it comes to certain issues, the only thing I really care about is freedom, liberty, the right of individuals to engage in public discourse. And, and that's why you'll see me heavily involved in the censorship debate. So let's read on for a little. Uh, we're, we're just about to wrap up. I don't want to go too long. Her critics, of course, would charge that she brings it on herself, stoking her millions of followers on Instagram and Twitter with provocative views on income inequality, healthcare, and climate change, and more, and with even stronger pushbacks against the trolls. Just like Trump. But as she showed at the, Co- showed at the Cohen hearing, Ocasio-Cortez can be more, more capable than most at actually doing her job, being well-prepared, not grandstanding, and asking pointed questions that actually elicited information. I will give her credit for this 100%. I'm not saying she's always right. But I do believe that Ocasio-Cortez has done a pretty damn good job in lines of questioning that have uh, the des- uh, to, to reach a desired outcome. I think you would be foolish to ignore the fact that she's had some viral hits, like the videos going wild, wild from C-SPAN, where she asked questions of certain individuals. I'm not saying she was right about it, but I got to say this, man. When, when I saw Jack Dorsey uh, you know, giving his testimony to Congress, I was shocked at how many people had no idea what the hell was going on. And when Cortez interviewed Cohen... She asked better questions than many people. Again, she then went on to tweet some false, like she, she, per, she pushed a falsehood because Cohen claimed Donald Trump Jr. was executive too. It's not true. I'm not saying she's right, but I am saying she does a good job of actually, you know, advocating for her side and calmly and rationally pointing out things that other people haven't. I think that's why she's very influential. When she did that dark money line of questioning, it went viral, even with conservatives. I can't remember which one, but a conservative tweeted, where's the lie? It's like, yeah, I think we can all recognize dark money is a huge problem. And then Cortez herself gets accused of you know, being involved in some kind of dark money scheme. So the point is, not that she's right, not that she's wrong, not that Trump is right or Trump is wrong, but that people certainly see them these ways. There are absolutely things Cortez should be commended for and criticized for, and the same is true for Donald Trump. When it comes to Cortez and her policy, I think she's way, 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 way off. But there is still some, some things to be said that she's highlighting issues that Americans wanted to hear about for a long time. That even Tucker Carlson uh, agreed with her on an issue, the, the Amazon issue, even though she was really wrong about what was going on. There was a, an interesting question as to why Amazon should be eligible for any of these benefits anyway. And Carlson agreed with her. And like I mentioned, some conservatives agreed with her stance on dark money, though she's now being dragged for it. I get it. But anyway, we'll, 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 we will wrap up there. We'll uh, suffice it to say, look, there's nuance in all things. Just because you disagree with Cortez's policy positions, the Green New Deal, socialism, and they're all, in my opinion, bad things, doesn't mean you should ignore anything she does that's right. If you see her do something good, and maybe it's almost never, maybe it's only 1% of the time, maybe it's more than that, can praise the good thing, can condemn the bad things. The same is true for Trump, and let's stop the crazy extremism. I have no problem criticizing either of them. When it comes to Cortez... I, I really don't see how me criticizing Trump all day and night would do anything valuable for anybody. But I'll, but I'll say this. The media has covered Trump to, to a ridiculous degree. What, what can I add to that conversation? I feel, I feel totally inadequate. But Ocasio-Cortez and these issues, they don't get covered by the mainstream for whatever reason. And I feel like I can actually do some reporting, which is underreported. And that's really why I have the focus I do, among other things like, you know, personal experiences. We'll leave it there. Stick around. I got another video coming up on my main channel, youtube.com slash Timcast at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And then at 6 p.m., I am going to have more videos on this channel, but I am going to be on the Dave Rubin show. So I will see you then.